Sports welcome you to Houlihan Stadium in Tampa, Florida. The crowd going wild as their undefeated 4-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers get set to host the 1-2 Arizona Cardinals. And a good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kenny Albert, along with Tim Green. Tim, the Buccaneers have endured through 14 consecutive losing seasons, but here in 1997, new uniforms, a perfect record, everything's gone right. It is going right, and especially if you look at their offense, you see total balance. You've got not one great running back, but two. Warwick Dunn has proven himself to be fast and elusive a la Barry Sanders. Mike Allstott is the best running fullback in the National Football League. He's a big guy who can make things happen. But the secret really has been Trent Dilfer because defenses coming into every game against Tampa have said, we're going to load up, we're going to stop the run, we're going to make Trent Dilfer beat us, and that is exactly what he's done. He's the highest rated quarterback right now in the National Football League. And on the other side, the Arizona Cardinals had a bye last week, so they've had two weeks to prepare for the Buccaneers, and the Cardinals defense should present a huge challenge. And they will, and, and they've had time to put together some tricks. You're going to see a lot of new innovative blitzes, but more importantly, you're going to see them stack that line of scrimmage trying to shut down the run they're going to expect eric swan and simeon rice to dominate the line of scrimmage and then they're going to rely on their cornerbacks the wonderful aeneas williams and the young rookie tommy knight to shut down the wide receivers of tampa bay and the buccaneers will look to continue their perfect 1997 their 4-0 so far and we'll have the opening kickoff for you when fox nfl sunday returns Kenny Albert, Tim Green, welcoming you back to Tampa, Florida. The 4-0 Buccaneers and the 1-2 Cardinals. Head coach Vince Tobin. The last two Cardinals games have gone into overtime. A victory over Dallas and a loss to the Redskins. They had a bye last week. And Tony Dungy's Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a record of 4-0. And there is Brent Dilfer, who is leading the National Football League in passing deep for the cardinals with kevin Bowie inactive today number 82 is kevin williams the former cowboy 32 is lashawn johnson michael houston will kick it off for the buccaneers but a bit of a problem tim as the ball blows off the team yeah there's not even that stiff of a win it's going to be a hot game today and i think you're going to see a lot of rotation on both offensive and defensive lines 87 degrees, a hot, humid afternoon. It rained much of Friday, much of Saturday. In fact, there was a soccer game here at the stadium on Friday night. The field was very, very muddy. But the rain did stop late last night. Tony Dungy told his club prior to the season, if we start 2-2, two and two, we'll be in great shape. They're 4-0. And, and we are underway in Tampa. Kevin Williams will stay right there. So the Arizona Cardinals will start out first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Led by Kenneth Graham, the former New York Giant, and Detroit Lion in his second year with the Cardinals over the first three games. Two touchdowns, only one interception, but he has lost three fumbles. The men protecting Graham, Selby returns. He missed the last game against the Redskins with a back injury. McElroy and the Pro Bowler centers, Rob Moore, Frank Sanders, and the tight end is Pat Carter. Sanders in motion. Graham on first down, the delayed handoff to Leland McElroy. Picks up five yards up to the 25. Tyrone Leggett made the stop. The Buccaneers defensively ranked 10th. Well, first against the run, the front four, Reagan Upshaw with Warren Sapp, Brad Culpepper, and Chidi Ahanatu. Brooks, Nickerson, and Gooch for the injured Rufus Porter. In the secondary, Leggett making his first start of the season for the injured Anthony Parker. Inactive today with a hamstring pull. Second down and five. Graham to the air for the first time. It's Frank Sanders about a yard short of the first down. Donnie Abraham made the tackle. And I think that's exactly where the Cardinals need to go as an alternative to the run game today. That is Kent Graham 
throwing outside to Frank Sanders and Rob Moore. Really two very, very talented wide receivers. Not only talented in their speed, in their ability to play physical, but in their size. You know, Frank Sanders, we talked to him yesterday. I said, how tall are you? He said he's 6'2", close to 6'3". You forget how tall he is because Rob Moore is 6'4", close to 6'5". They're very effective. Third down and one, Graham on the sneak. Looks to have the first down. When it's a hot day, you want your offense to go out there to run a couple, throw, mix the throw in, have a very balanced attack, and work your way down the field. Keep those defensive guys on the bench, under the cool zone, with the Gatorade in their hand. And then when they can come in, they're going to be fresh and they're going to be able to run. The Cardinals used to the heat. In fact, that is why they have played three of their first four on the road. Through the years, Arizona not play many home games in September. On first down, it's McElroy once again, a flag on the play. As Derek Brooks and Hardy Nickerson combined on the stop. Now, our referee this afternoon is Dale Hamer, and this one is against Tampa Bay. Hands to the face, number 77 on the defense, five yards, first down. That's Brad Culpepper, the nose guard. Now he's right there on the center, so one of his first moves is getting those hands right up, but he can't get them up and into the mask of Mike Devlin, the center. Here he is right here. here's the Devlin center. That's the face that he's going to go to, right there. The hand right there on the mask. It's a nice call. I mean, that's a pretty sharp, sharp set of peeps on the part of the, the official to see that that early in the game right off. Here's Graham on first down. The intended receiver was Larry Centers. Derek Brooks on the covers, and Graham took a hard hit. Tampa Bay on first down defensively, what they want to do is they want to stack up, they want to play aggressively. Now, this is a one-gap defense. Well, what does one-gap mean? It means that you take Culpepper and Sapp, Reagan Upshaw, Chidi Hanatu, you put them in a gap, you don't tell them to run into anybody. You tell them to fill space and get up field. That works well against the run, but it also guarantees you're going to get hits on the quarterback in the pass. Second down and 10. Sanders in motion. McElroy cuts it inside up to the 39-yard line. A gain of three. Jeff Gooch on the stop. Now the Tampa Bay defensive linemen are licking their chops because this is what they dream of. This is what they work for. Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, tells those guys, if you hold the line and you get into third and anything more than eight, which is what they're in right now, about third and seven, third and eight, I'm going to turn you guys loose, let you run stunts up front and get to the quarterback. Four wideouts, Brown out of the shotgun on third down, fires, and it's incomplete. So the Cardinals will be forced to punt. Kent Graham thinks his receiver was interfered with, and he's going to plead his case to the official. And it's not going to do anything now, but what it will do is those officials will be heightened. I mean, their, their interest in the receivers, their eyes are going to go to those receivers just the same way they went to Culpepper putting his hand in Devlin's mask earlier on. Jeff Beagles with Carl Williams in single safety. Here's Williams from the 27 across the 30 to the 32-yard line. So the Buccaneers to the offense when we return. 33-yard punt by Beagles, five on the return. Well, we talked about Arizona in the open stacking up against Tampa Bay's run game. Here's how they're doing it. They're putting five defensive linemen, five. Normally, and Brad Otis is the fifth. Normally, they play four defensive linemen. They have removed a defensive back, Matt Darby, their strong safety. They've added a defensive lineman. You can't be any more committed to stopping the run than having five defensive linemen in the game. It's the ultimate eight-man front. Five linemen, three linebackers, and three defensive backs. Dilfer to the end on first down, off the fingertips of Horace Copeland, and he is Williams on the coverage. Trent Dilfer. The leading passer, the top-rated passer in the National Football League over the first four weeks. He's thrown eight touchdowns, only two interceptions, still for the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. 
The men protecting Dilfer, they've done a terrific job. And the rookie sensation, Warwick Dunn, with the fullback, Mike Allstott. Anthony, the rookie out of Florida, with Copeland. And the tight end is Jackie Harris. Copeland in motion on second down. Warwick Dunn already with two 100-yard games. A gain of two, so it will be third down and eight. And check out the Arizona Cardinals defensively. Simeon Rice, Bernard Wilson, the pro bowler, Eric Swan, and Michael Bankston. The linebacking core, Eric Hill still out with a leg injury. Aeneas Williams, the perennial pro bowler. And remember, Matt Darby has been replaced by a defensive lineman, Brad Otis. Three wide receivers for the Bucks on third down and eight. Dilfer in trouble, and he is taken down by Eric Swan, his fourth sack of the season. And that's dominating the line of scrimmage. Brilliant defensive game plan. Come out with eight men, stop the run, put them in a known passing situation, and then do what they do with Reggie White. Take Eric Swan, normally on the inside, move him outside to end. He's one-on-one -on -one with Jason Odom, and he dominates him, and he gets the sack. It's a great start for the Cardinals' defense. Kevin Williams back deep. Tommy Barnhart, who did not punt at all on Sunday night in the Buccaneers' victory over Miami with an early opportunity here today. Williams from the 25. And he is met immediately by Greg Belisari. 46-yard punt, three on the return. Boy, when you say it's not the same old Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I guess not. I mean, everybody, even in the crowd, there's skulls everywhere. They got the pewter and they got the, I don't know if it's not even orange anymore, the red. Everybody's wearing pewter. Yeah, it's different. It's skulls. Graham, with time, swings it out. Captured made ball. by Larry Centers as Tyrone Leggett and Jeff Gooch combined on the stop. I think they need to do more of this. I think they need to use more of Larry Centers and more of Chris Gedney, their tight end, in the passing game. Now here, Graham's looking downfield, but when he sees that his wide receivers are covered, he goes immediately to Larry Centers. And that's always a good play for you if you're the Cardinals, because he's sure-handed, he can make things happen after the catch. And he took a shot on that last play, and he walked off. We're getting checked out by the trainers. And that, that was a hit that he took. Three wide receivers. Oh, the one. Took a hard hit, a head-on collision. After wow. a short game. I think that was John Lynch. I mean, this is a guy whose father was a linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now you know that Bloodlines has something to do with playing in the National Football League. He's, Lynch is going to come from here with a running start and watch him hit McElroy. Look at that. I mean, that's... That is it. That's an NFL hit. That, that's a highlight clip waiting to happen. Lynch, you played, that? Lynch played quarterback his first two years in college, but he said, I want to hit people. <laughs> I, be, I believe he does. Did you hear that hit? That was great sound. Great sound work. Here's Lestat Johnson, his first carry of the season. Close to the first down marker. Marty Nickerson made the stop. Last year, LaShawn Johnson did not carry the football over the first three games, then exploded in game number four against New Orleans for 214 yards. Kenny, what LeSean Johnson has is tremendous speed. What he also has is trouble at times hanging onto the football and he gets out of control. But if he gets under control and he has a chance to use that speed, he can explode. Larry centers on the Arizona sidelines. He has been replaced by Cedric Smith. Play action. Grand score is deflected. Pat Carter, the intended receiver, could not hang on. I talked about the blitz on first down, and it's an aggressive one-gap defense. I want you to watch Hardy Nickerson and how he comes in on this play. Actually, it's not Nickerson. It's Brooks who comes in on that play and puts the hit on Graham, forces Graham to throw that ball where he doesn't want to throw it to a covered tight end. Johnson, Malone back on the 
and delay. It's Johnson up the middle. Flag on the play. I hope it's not Culpepper's hands to the guy's face again. No, it's not. Once your hands start going to the guy's face, guys start grabbing. Holding. Number 60 the offense. 10 yards. Repeat second down. It's Anthony Redmond. Uh, that, that always goes on in there. The amazing thing is when the officials see that stuff. Because once the ball is snapped, it's like a big strum in there. And guys are knocking each other and they're grabbing each other's faces. And they're, they're throwing, you know, elbows and fists and all kinds of stuff. And it's just a matter of when do the officials have the visual acuity to pick it out and pull the flag. They're grabbing stuff up here in the booth. I know. I, I, mean, I, I think I'm back down there. Second down and 20. Sanders in motion. Graham under pressure, fires off the fingertips of Sanders and nearly picked off by Tyrone Leggett. He's been in the, in the middle of the action today, starting replacing Anthony Parker. And Leggett has been around the football for this entire yeah. first quarter. And, and you can expect that he will continue to be around the football because they're going to want to attack it. Tyrone Leggett, normally the nickelback in coverage, so that normally he covers the slot. And he doesn't have the job of having to cover a big-time wide receiver like Frank Sanders. There's Anthony Parker right there with the pulled hamstring and out for the game. Third down and 20. Three wide receivers. Graham from the shotgun. In trouble. Centers. And he is pulled down by again. Well short, about nine yards shy of the first down, but fortunately for the Cardinals, Centers has returned. Taken up, moments to go. And once again, the Cardinals will be forced to punt. There's Jeff Beagles, Carl Williams. Back deep, waiting at his own 23 yard line. from Temple University in only his third NFL game. And the point after attempt is no good. Well, I was going to say, sometimes when things go right, everything goes right. But there, that's a minor wrong for a big right. Here's Al Singleton. He uses a basic inside pass rush move to beat Terry Irving and split the seam between Irving and Smith right there. Just an inside swim move, just like a defensive lineman. He blocks it, and then he scoops it up. I tell you, when things are going right, that's what happens. You block a punt, and the ball bounces right up into your hands. They need a new tee here for Michael Houston. Well, that, that extra point where Houston missed only the second of his career in 116 point after attempts. Here's Here's one more. Look, look, at at look at the block. You, you see that ball bounce? It bounce, he blocked it, then it bounced off the kicker, and then it bounced off somebody else right into Singleton's hands. You know you're living right when things happen that way. And Houston boots this one through the end zone. Ironically, the only other extra point Houston missed was last year against the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And that's not a small thing because all of a sudden, you've gone from, you know, seven points and six points is a huge differential in, in, in football because now Arizona knows just one more touchdown, just one touchdown, we're not only back in the game, we're back in the game with the lead. First time the Buccaneers have scored a touchdown on a blocked punt since 1989. Ironically, in their last game two weeks ago, 
the Cardinals lost a Matt Turk punt in the game against the Redskins. And Tommy Bennett fell on it in the end zone for an Arizona touchdown. Graham to Sanchez spins across the 25 to the 27. So a gain of seven on first down. I think you're going to see Larry Centers play a better game this week simply because of Mike Allstott. Centers last year, the pro bowler, Allstott, the alternate pro bowler at the fullback position for the NFC. And Centers knows that Allstott's over there on the sideline. He knows people are going to be comparing him to Allstott. And he wants to, you know, he wants to play his best football today. Sanders in motion. Good second effort, turns the corner, and has the first down, wrapped up by Tyrone Leggett once again. The people say that Leland McElroy is not the answer for the Arizona Cardinals run game, but I don't know because I saw him make some spectacular runs during preseason. Now, the idea is to attack the Tampa Bay Buccaneers straight up. It's a fast defense. But when he sees there's nothing there, and this is what I like about Leland McElroy, he can make things happen. He breaks it to the outside, and he picks up the first down all on his own. From the 34, Ram fires off the fingertips of Sanders. See, that can't happen. I mean, Frank, Frank knows that it can't happen. Now they're sap down. Of course, he had the bad ankle last week, did not play against Miami, came back for this game, and that will be a serious blow to Tampa Bay's defense if Sapp is not in there. Remember, he had the thumb injury two weeks ago against Minnesota, then the ankle, so he has been plagued by various ailments all season long. Well, Sapp has really stepped up his game. Now, here he is right here, and you can see how well he stepped up his game. He turns Mike Devlin completely around, puts the pressure on the quarterback, I don't know where he hurt himself. It looked as if he hurt, he hurt himself when he spun around. Now sometimes if you have an ankle like that and it's hurting you anyway, you're just going to exacerbate it when you spin. And, and sometimes, hopefully for Tampa Bay, he'll be able to go off and just put a lot more tape on that thing and then get back out there. Marcus Jones, who broke Lawrence Taylor's sack record at North Carolina, will replace... Warren Sapp. Second and ten. Cardinals on their own 34-yard line, trailing 6-0. And the delay. They keep it on the ground with McElroy. Eric Brooks made the stop, and right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. Hey, Kenny, the Buccaneers will see a packed team that even if the play isn't executed well, it's still effective. 36-yard wounded duck to Antonio Freeman. That set up a 36-yard field goal. Packed on top by three, and the Packers are driving again. Back to Kenny Albert and Tim Green. I, I agree, Kenny, with what Ronnie Lott said in the pregame. The key to the Detroit Lions is Scott Mitchell. He runs hot and cold when he's hot. There's no one better. When he's cold, the Giants are in trouble. And Kent Brown is taken down. There's Culpepper. Culpepper along with Marcus Jones. <laughs> oh, and this guy's a beaut, isn't he? University of Florida guy, history major. Law school. Yeah, law school guy. Here he is up here. Watch him. He's worked right through Anthony Redmond. Now, the beauty of it is they're not bothering to double-team Culpepper. He's not Warren Sapp. They put one guy on him, but he blows right by and picks up the sack. And this time, no trouble for Beagles, whose last part was blocked. Williams knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Buccaneers back to the offense, leading 6-0. Welcome back to Tampa. Warren Sapp and the Buccaneers leading the Arizona Cardinals by the score of 6-0. Buccaneers first and 10 from their own 36-yard line as Dilford swings it out and it is incomplete. Pass was not handled by the tight end. Dave Moore, Buccaneers leading despite running, including the first down incompletion now four offensive plays cardinals have controlled the ball for nine 
out of the ten and a half minutes. Right, and the reason why they were able to shut down Tampa Bay's offense in that initial drive was because they came out with five defensive linemen and they stacked up the line of scrimmage. They're back to your regular defense. Now. Two tight ends for the Buccaneers. All stop. Powers his way up the middle for a gain of two, perhaps three yards. Even with regular personnel in on that play, Matt Darby, the strong safety, moved up to the line of scrimmage. Again, the Arizona Cardinals determined to put eight men on the line of scrimmage to shut down Tampa Bay's run game. The thing about Allstott and Warwick Dunn is they have the capacity to break it loose. They each have the individual capacity to beat their man, to beat that eighth man in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Allstott with power, Dunn with speed. Third down and seven. Dilfer looking for the deep ball, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was the rookie out of Florida, Redell Anthony. He was looking for the flag, but instead, the box will punt. And nice coverage by the young rookie we talked about, Tommy Knight, is gimping off a little bit on this play. Now, there's coverage over the top. Kwame Lassiter is the safety. You see him running into the screen there. He's got coverage over the top. Knight does a nice job of recovering catching Redell Anthony from behind and saving Kwame Lasseter from a thorough chewing out on the, line, on the sideline. Barnhart, second punt. And it bounces into the end zone. So the Cardinals will start from their own 20-yard line, 61 yards on the punt, 41 net yards, with three and a half remaining in this first quarter. And the Buccaneers on top, 6-0. Well, Tampa Bay off to the 4-0 start, complete reversal from last year. Yeah, and the reason we talked about is that balanced offense. And when you have a balanced offense, you got 24 points a game as opposed to 11. And when you're playing that kind of offense, it gives your defense a rest, and it allows them to play that high-speed, aggressive, one-gap defense that Tampa Bay does play. I think Cole Pepper got another. He starts, maybe he should get the center in the face mask every every time in the beginning of the game. All of a sudden, it's going it's going great for him. Here's Cole Pepper. He's working on Devlin the center. Again, now they double team him. They put two guys on him, so the challenge is twice. Then Devlin comes off him. Again, that that's a lack of respect. That's a lack of respect for a guy. They're saying, hey, Cole Pepper's just a grunt in there. He's a nose tackle. You know, he's, he's not a high first round draft choice. He doesn't have great statistics. We can block him with two, but then we'll pull the guy off. They pulled the guy off and he got the sack. Second down and 12. Graham over the top. The catch is made by Rob Moore. John Lynch on the stop after a gain of three. Let's see, I, I mean, I don't like that play there for Arizona because it's second 12 and they're using Rob Moore, who is a deep threat, a guy on the outside with size, with speed, with the ability to leap up and, and out jump a cornerback, and they're running him across the middle for a little three yard pass route. That's where you want to use Larry Center. That's where you want to use Chris Gedney, their tight end who's got the best hands of any tight end on their team, and probably any tight end in the league. Four wide receivers, Graham fires, deflected, and the catch is made for the first down by Anthony Edwards. It bounced off the intended receiver, Sanders, into the hands of Edwards, a gain of 10, and a Cardinals first down. Well, it's a nice bobble, nice heads-up play by Edwards, but you, the ball's got to get there. The ball gets there because Kent Graham hangs in. You're going to see the blitz coming from this side. There comes Hardy Nickerson. There comes Melvin Johnson. The safety, it's not a well-thrown ball. But Kent Graham does hang in under pressure and gets that ball out there. He's got to start leaving his receivers more. He's had a lot of balls thrown behind him. On first down, Sanders is taken down by Hardy Nickerson. When you look at this, you wonder how in the world Arizona could be behind. The answer is the block punt. And that really has been Vince Tobin's undoing of his team this season. One in three but having one and two 
but they've had an inordinate amount of turnovers. They've fumbled the ball 11 times more than any other team. They've lost eight of them more than any other team. Graham makes the connection with Leland McElroy. Drives out of bounds by Tyrone Leggett. So while Arizona has been able to, to move the ball and to get things going offensively and to play outstanding sound defense, they've lost their two of their first three games because they've given up the big plays. They've given up the turnovers and they failed to get the turnovers on their defense. All of the games have been close. An overtime victory over Dallas, an overtime loss to Washington. In their opening game in Cincinnati, they led 21-3 heading into the fourth quarter. And with under two minutes remaining, Larry Centers fumbled and the Bengals capitalized. And Graham forced to call timeout with 19 seconds remaining in the first quarter and the Cardinals trailing by six. Dick Jamison, Cardinals offensive coordinator as we approach the end of this first quarter. Now one thing Dick Jamison has not had this season is cohesiveness at the offensive line. There you see Rob Selby right there. Selby was out with an injury with a hurt back and they lost James Dexter with a hurt knee at right tackle. They were replaced. And last week, Aaron Graham, the guy who replaced Selby, he was hurt. So they haven't had the continuity that Jamison would like at offensive line. The inside handoff to Lashawn Johnson across the 40 to the 41 shy of the first down. Chidi Ahanatu made the stop. And that will do it for the first quarter from Tampa, Florida. A block putt by rookie linebacker Al Singleton, who returned it to the end zone. And the Buccaneers lead the Cardinals 6-0. Back in Tampa, where the Buccaneers lead the Arizona Cardinals through one quarter by the score of 6-0. Kenny Albert, Tim Green back with you. And Tim, you told us during the open about a new wrinkle to the Cardinals defensively. Yeah. They came out in a 5-3-3. Yeah, I mean, that that is a commitment to stopping the run. Having five defensive linemen, three linebackers, and only three defensive backs in the game. Now what that is also is a challenge to Trent Dilfer to get that ball out there to his wide receivers and win this game. And they have held the Buccaneers to no yards offensively and on the fake punt. There's another wrinkle from the Cardinals on the fake punt. It's a first down for Arizona. Now sometimes when things aren't going your way, when, when you've lost two of your three games, on a fumble, on a free play, you have to just make things happen. They're going to snap the ball directly to Ronald McKinnon here, and Fiegels does a nice job of faking a bad snap, and that draws the attention of these guys back here away from the runner and towards the putter. Gives him just an instant. It's a small thing, but that's the difference between a successful fake punt and an unsuccessful one. So the Cardinals drive continues. Graham. Ah! That's what he needs to do. Yes, he hits Rob Moore this yeah. time. Not behind him, but right there, right to Rob Moore. Not Rob Moore on a three-yard pattern, but Rob Moore on a slant. Go to work. Allow this big guy to run and to beat the defensive backs man-to-man, -man, especially when he's got Tyrone Leggett on him, who is normally the nickel defensive back. Now, that's not to disparage Leggett. But, obviously, he's not as good as Anthony Parker. Otherwise, Leggett would be the starter. And Parker would be the nickel guy. Ten yards from Graham to Moore for another Cardinals first down. Graham pump fakes and then dumps it off to Leland McElroy. Gets a couple of good blocks. Wow. And he is inside the Tampa Bay 40. And Melvin Johnson hit him hard. It's a nice play by the Arizona Cardinals. And this is a play that they worked on in training camp. Didn't work too well in their first two games. Worked well against the Washington Redskins. Now, I want you to watch Graham. And you see that pump fake? That's like Fiegel's fake on the fake punt. That pump fake freezes the defensive backs, freezes the linemen, and enables these guys up here to create a nice wall for Leland McElroy. Again, it's a small thing, but small things turn into big things. That's how you win. Graham has completed his last five pass attempts, seven of his last eight. Keeps it on the ground with McElroy up the middle. Looks to be about a yard shy of the first down. Reagan Upshaw was the first buck to come together with McElroy. 
even though Tampa Bay's defense is the number one rushing defense right now in the National Football League, you also have to understand that part of that is because their offense has done such a good job of scoring points. They, they're so diversified with their weapons that other teams have been behind. And when teams are behind, they don't have the luxury to run the football. They have to start throwing the football. Arizona believes today they can run against this Tampa Bay defense, even though they're number one. Third down and one. Brown to the air, oh. intended for Santos. Larry knows he's got to make that play. It's nice protection. Everyone's expecting run. Dick Jamison is really calling a nice offensive game plan. It's a changeup. It, this is a run play. This is where the defensive linemen are knuckling down, expecting to stop a short pass. Kent Graham delivers this ball nicely. I think that ball just nicks Hardy Nickerson's shoulder pad, and that's what distracts Larry Centers, and that's why he doesn't make that catch. Now that's all it is, because you're watching that ball. You're watching the trajectory. If it gets nicked, now big field goal. They sent out Butler. It's fourth down and one. And they keep it on the ground. Fumble, fumble. Brown went diving into the pile, and the Buccaneers say they have it. We've seen a fake punt, now a fake field goal. It would have been a 54-yard attempt. It was Eric Swan who took the handoff from Graham on fourth and one and fumbled. Eric Swan took the handoff. That's unbelievable. Now, I know the guy's got, I know he's big and he's got speed, but you have to credit Tampa Bay's defense for rising to the occasion. There's Marcus Jones because, hey, they've been tricked today already. They were tricked on the fake punt. All of a sudden, they come up, they go to the fake field goal, and Tampa Bay's defense rises to the occasion. <laughs> on, the, on the fake punt, the Cardinals are outmanned because Tampa Bay only uses one defensive back to cover two receivers. Now, I know one of these is Pat Carter and one is Kevin Butler, but look at that. There's only one guy to cover them, so there's an extra guy in the run defense. Pat Graham is going to pull that down and throw a pass. And now Warwick Dunn could not handle the pitch back from Dilfer. So we have seen not only new wrinkles from the Cardinals defensively, but on special teams. First, they had a punt blocked. Then a fake punt, which was successful for a first down, and, and moments later, the fake field goal attempt. Yeah, and, and the fake field goal attempt would have worked, because, but they had to pass it. I mean, Kent Graham had to drop back, and he's got two receivers out there with only one guy to cover him. I mean, they, there's no way that they could cover him. One of those receivers was the kicker. Kevin I know, Butler. but even that, even that, I mean, if, if he's out there completely wide open, just lob it up in the air and let him bring it down. Gilford in trouble, dumps it off. Now, I know you have been a, uh, you've talked about kickers over the last couple of weeks and the fact that they are not like the other football players, yeah. the position players. How do you feel about a kicker going out as a receiver? Well, Butler's the cat that thinks he's a dog. And another guy that's un in an unusual position right here is Eric Swan. He's playing on the end. Jason Odom's the right tackle for Tampa Bay. Thought he was going to have a, a just an, an average day at the office. Guess what? He's not. He's going to have to pass block Eric Swan all day long. That's a tough task. On third and 16, Walker's pass could not be handled by Warwick Dunn. And the Buccaneers have gone three and out on all three of their offensive possessions. Well, Kenny, Tech Kenny, Jason Odom's had his taste. Now Jerry Wunsch is out here. He's going to get a taste of Eric Swan. Watch it here. Look at Swan. He's too strong and too dominant. They put two on him, and he knocks right into Dilfer, and that's what knocks this pass off the line. Tommy Farnhart, punt for the third time. Devin Williams, no, Farnhart, no! And it's complete! Oh, Another play on special teams as the pass was completed to Tony Bowie. I've never seen one-upmanship like this. 
One special team fake, another special team fake, a block punt for a touchdown. It works, it doesn't work. Joe Marciano, the special teams coach for Tampa Bay, says, I'm not going to be outdone. And he learned from the Cardinals and said, let's not run it on the fake, let's throw it. And a pickup of 25 yards. So the Buccaneers in Cardinals territory. Lima, Lima. Lima, Lima. Play clock winding down. Play action. And get this pass is complete. Miguel Anthony for another Buccaneers first down. Trent Dilfer told us yesterday if he could just hold up and hang in against the Cardinals' rush and against the blitz, his receivers could find the soft spot in the zone. And that's exactly what Riedel Anthony does. It's zone coverage. There's a pickup on Simeon Rice. Dilfer has the time. And watch Riedel Anthony. Look at no, no one's near him. Because there's the up coverage. There's the back coverage. He finds the soft spot, sits down, and Dilfer finds him. Inside the 25 to the 23, and right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's head to James Brown in our Fox Television Center. Hey, Kenny, in the battle of one and three squads, the Saints and the Giants, it's Eric Allen, the DB, blowing on the covers there as Kevin Alexander hauls in his first career NFL touchdown. The Giants on top of the Saints, 7-3, back in the second. Back to Kenny and Tim. Thanks, JB. Well, Mike Dickin may have to rip Eric Allen again. <laughs> He did that. He ripped them in the San Francisco game two weeks ago, and Allen had one of his best games ever last week against the Detroit Lions. From the 23, Warren Young picks up three more, down to the Cardinals, 20. And now we're seeing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going back to that run game. They want to run the football. They know how valuable that is, and they know that with work done and Mike Allstott, we talked about it before, a big play can happen anytime. A one-yard runner, a two-yard runner, a one-yard pass can turn into a 50 or 60-yard touchdown in the hands of either of these two players. Third down and three. Gilbert's <laughs> pass is caught by the tight end, Jackie Harris. Or at least it appeared that Harris made the catch. Cardinals not happy about it. And it is a Buccaneers first down. Jackie Harris is the forgotten man in this Tampa Bay offense. But he shouldn't be because he's incredibly talented. And he's talented because of his great hands. That is a difficult catch because he has to turn his hands backwards to snag that ball. This is a man that maybe he's forgotten, but when they need him, he's there. Not forgotten by Trent Gilford. First and ten from the 15. Mike Allstock works his way down to the 13-yard line. So the Buccaneers, who appear to go three and out on their first three possessions, the 25-yard gain on the fake punt. Sometimes teams may not see this many fake plays on special teams during the course of an entire season. We've seen three here today. There's some trick plays. We got it for after cover. Two by Arizona, one by Tampa Bay. But for Arizona, only one of the two works. All stop. That's what he does. Now the crowd's going wild. They love this guy. This guy's like apple pie. I mean, everybody wants a piece of him. Everyone wants to take him home. Everyone wants to have him at the dinner table because he's an all-American kid. Grew up, blue-collar family, nice parents. Had parents never missed a game, but this is what they love about him. Look at this. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. He stopped, but he's not stopped. That's the beauty of Mike Allstott. He never stops running. From the Cardinals, eight. Walker fires. Touchdown. Rendell Anthony. That's why this guy, Trent Dilfer, has raised himself to another level. 
The Cardinals said, we're going to make Dilfer beat us. Guess what? Dilfer just beat us. They're going to go for two on this because of the missed extra point by Houston after the touchdown on the block punt. But that's Dilfer raising himself to another level. Short. So the Buccaneers lead is 12-0. Second touchdown reception of the season for the first round draft pick, Riddell Anthony. Oh, free. Trent Dilfer said last week, I saw Riddell Anthony make big plays for Danny Warfel for three years in Florida. Now he's got to do it for me. Two weeks in a row with a touchdown pass. As big as he gets. Buccaneers 4-0. They started 5-0 once back in 1979 when they advanced to the NFC Championship game. Evan Williams at deep for the Cardinals. Williams from the three. To the outside, across the 25, across the 30, and the kicker, Houston, pulls him down. A flag is thrown. Oh, they're going to give him grief for that. Getting brought down by the kicker. You never want to let that happen as a return man. Maybe kickers are real football players. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think so. I know you debated that fact in a, in a USA Today yeah. column two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. Holding number 44 on the return, 10 yards, first down, timeout. We've seen a puncher throw a, a pass for a 25-yard gain, a kicker make a tackle. You sure you don't want to change your mind? No, I'm not going to change my mind because they still don't suffer during training camp. Back in Tampa Bay. Well, Kenny, in my USA Today column, I said that when a tick kicker does make a tackle, it looks like tossing a, a shirt into the laundry. If that doesn't look like a shirt being tossed into the laundry right there, you haven't tossed a shirt into the laundry. The shirt's still clean. Graham incomplete on first down. Over the Cardinals' first four possessions. And, and this has been the story of the Cardinals. This is why they're 1-2 and two instead of 3-0. and oh. And you see the punt, but here the block punt, which ends in a touchdown, and then another punt, which isn't good, but then another turnover. That's their eighth fumble that they've lost. That leads the National Football League. And that I remember puts that. them to minus six, and you, you can't win when you're minus six. You're not going to the playoffs if you're minus six in turnovers at the end of the season. And that fumble took place during the fake punt attempt. The fake field goal attempt, I should say. Larry Center stopped after a short game. Flags there may be down. a fumble. Nope, they're saying the ball was down and the whistle Runner was blown. ruled down by contact. Third down. The Cardinals in overtime in their last game against the Redskins thought Leland McElroy was down, but uh, the Redskins recovered in two plays later, scored the game-winning touchdown. Yeah. Well, when you're seeing the fumbles, because these guys right here, they are a swarming defense. They're fast, and they run it to the football. Is you can be fast, but if you don't run to the football, you don't force turnovers. Four wide receivers. Graham in third down, in trouble. And the capture is made by Rob Moore. That's the big play they're saying Rob Moore needs to make. And that's a big play that Kent Graham just made. The blitzer comes untouched. Graham uses his size and his athletic ability to beat this. Watch the blitz, watch Mincy. He comes untouched. Watch Graham's poise, look at this. Mincy breaks the rule by jumping in the air. You don't jump in the air against a big guy like Graham. But look at the present. And then he takes it right up into the line of scrimmage where he knows he's gonna get hammered. This is what you can do with Rob Moore. Remember I spoke about it earlier. You can put the ball up for grabs with that guy around the football. Because he's 6'4", he's strong, and he can leap. And of 28 yards from Graham to Moore. On first down, Graham over the top to the tight end, Chris Gedney, for another 
Cardinals first down. And that's what I like. I mean, Larry Sanders has caught a bunch of balls, and now they're getting the ball to Chris Gedney. I like that. I, the Cardinals have a wonderful passing attack. They've got a weapon in Gedney. He knows how to get himself open in the center, center of the field, and that, if you use it over time, will draw the safeties towards him, draw the linebackers towards him, and isolate Rob Warren and Frank Sanders one-on-one -on, -one on the cornerback. From the 32, Graham to Sanders. And he was taken down by Donnie Abraham after a gain of five yards. Well, Tim, our Aflac trivia question this afternoon. Three other teams have started 0-4 one season and then 4-0 the following year. Can you name any of the previous three? <laughs> well, I can name one. And why is that? You'll see. So show yourself. Cardinals keep it on the ground. Derek Brooks made the stop. Well, three teams prior to this season's Buccaneers have started 0-4 and, and then began 4-0 the next year. Well, there you have it. The Lions in 1956, the 82 Redskins, and Tim Green's Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, my rookie year. Came back, went 4-0. Ultimately, missed the playoffs that year because in a game late in the season against the Colts, a punt was blocked to turn the game around. Graham out of the shotgun on third down, and the catch is made just across the 22-yard line by Anthony Edwards for a gain of five as the Cardinals keep their drive alive. Ironically, the Falcons' fourth victory in 86 to make it 4-0 came 11 years ago today against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How about that? Well, I was on injured reserve during that game. And so they still won. I can't take credit for the win. Two-minute warning in Tampa. Back in Tampa where the Buccaneers lead the Cardinals by the score of 12-0 with two minutes remaining in the first half. Tuesday night on Fox, it's game one of the American League Division Series. Don't miss the AL Central champion Cleveland Indians take on the defending World Series champion New York Yankees as they begin their quest for a second straight title. Catch all the action right here on Fox starting at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The Yankees and the Indians. Brown on first down, fires to the end zone and has the touchdown. Rob Moore. And the Cardinals are on the scoreboard. You gotta love that connection. Graham to Moore. I think the more that they do that, the more Kent Graham throws to, to Rob Moore, the better the two of them are gonna get. I want you to watch Kent Graham again, hanging in against the Blitz. You'll watch it after this catch. Moore just absolutely lights up Melvin Johnson wide open because of a great move he puts on to the end. You cannot cover, the, if you're lucky if you can cover Rob Moore with a cornerback, you're never going to cover him with a safety. First touchdown of the season for Moore, Kevin Butler adds the point after. And the Buccaneers lead is now 12-7. 21 yards from Graham to Rob Moore. For the last five years, I've had this dream. Feed your dream with Twin Lab Creatine Fuel. I talked about the protection that Kent Graham got. It's a zone blitz. Culpepper drops out. Nickerson on the blitz. That's a classic zone blitz. Nickerson gets the heat on Graham. Look at that. That's pressure. That's hanging in there under it. And incidentally, it was not Melvin Johnson. It was Tyrone Leggett who got beat by Rob jo Rob Moore. And I apologize to Melvin Johnson's mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, here's Warren Cohen. Looking to break one across the 40 to the 43-yard line before he was finally pulled down by Anthony Edwards. 31 yards on the return by Dunn. Well, we talked about Warwick Dunn being 
dangerous anywhere on the field. We talked about when he runs the ball from the line of scrimmage and when he runs the ball after he catches it. But we forgot to mention when he returns that he's dangerous all over the field. And that was his longest return of the season. Now he right now has four carries for minus one yards. Don't let it fool you. He has the capacity to bust one loose. Could be this play, could be 20 plays from now. Here's Dunn, spins across the 45 to the 48. Plant came down. And it is holding against Tampa Bay. I think they grabbed hold of Eric Swan. He is a tough guy to handle for any offensive line. Holding. Offense, number 73, 10 yards. Repeat first down. That's Frank Middleton, the rookie guard out of the University of Arizona. Yeah, now, here's Swan, and there's Middleton right there. So let's take a look at it. Here it is, yep, he's holding Swan. See Swan, jams it back, and Middleton hangs on to him, and you see that tackle right there when he gets his arms wrapped around his neck? Now I don't blame him, because if I was in his shoes, I'd do the same thing, just grab and hang on for dear life. Dilbert on first and 20 was looking for Copeland, Tom Knight, the first round draft pick from Iowa on the coverage. What the Arizona Cardinals are doing defensively is Dave McGinnis is switching it up nicely. He's blitzing and then he's dropping off and putting eight men into coverage, like on that last play. Only three Cardinals defensive linemen rush. So we've seen a lot from Dave McGinnis today. We saw him come out, run an eight man front with 65 defensive linemen, three linebackers, only three DBs. Now he's mixing it up, rushing three, and dropping eight. Now he may blitz. We don't know what he's going to do. And Dilfer changed the play. Three wide receivers. Second down and point. Dilfer can't find anyone. And it's got it back to Dilfer. Jameer Miller got a piece of it. People wondered whether Jameer Miller was going to be able to replace Seth Joyner, and he has. The thing that Seth Joyner did, he had great ability not only to cover receivers, but he had great ability on the blitz, not just to run up there untouched and tackle the quarterback, but to run up there, and if someone opposed him, to put a pass rush move on a lineman or a fullback to beat them and get to the quarterback, it's exactly what he did on that last play. He raised his game another level. In his fourth season, he is not yet 24 years old. Four wideouts, third down, and 20. And the Buccaneers keep on the ground with Dunn. And the Cardinals call timeout. They stop the clock with a minute 17 remaining in the first half. They trail by five. Twelve seven lead for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kenny Albert with Tim Green. Yeah, there it is. I'm sorry, Kenny. Sorry, there's, there's Dave McGinnis with Joe Green, the defensive line coach of the Cardinals. They've done a nice job today of calling a lot of different defenses, giving Tampa Bay's offense a lot to think about. And it takes a Buccaneers bounce out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Cardinals with one timeout remaining and 67 seconds to go until the Dockers Khakis halftime coming up. JB, Terry, Howie, and Ronnie from our Hollywood studios will bring you scores and highlights from around the National Football League. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second steps. That's all coming up on the Dockers Khakis halftime report. I tell you, I admire Trevor Maddich, one of our Fox analysts, for going in there with those guys in the studio. That's like a den alliance. And then he had the uh, he had the gumption to, to talk about a, a golden apple on top of Terry Bradshaw's head, playing off the. Uh, you know, the lack of hair business. I mean, that, that's, that's some gumption. Better Trevor than Tim. Yeah, I don't think I would have done it. Grant is taken down. It is Cole Pepper again, his third sack today. <laughs> you see him? Look at him. He's got no, I mean, he's one of those guys where if you look at him, you say, well, wait a minute, this guy's really not that tall. He's not that physically imposing. All this guy is is a pure football player. He grew up playing football. His dad was a football player, and it's in his blood. I mean, we talked about John Lynch. This guy's the same thing. Grant 
under pressure, and he is sacked again. One thing the Arizona Cardinals said coming into this game was that they were not going to do anything special against Warren Sapp. Sapp just showed them that that was a mistake. Here's Sapp. He's working against Rob Selby. And you see there's no special help. It's just Sapp and Selby, and Sapp beats him. He beats him clean. Look, they got two guys over there on Culpepper. <laughs> Guy's got three sacks. I guess they're giving him a little respect. He had ten sacks in six seasons coming into the game today. Brad Culpepper, three today. It's the first time he's ever had more than one in a game. That's a lot of sacks for the Cardinals' offensive line to have allowed. They came into this game with only five in three games. Today, Carl Mock, there's the uh, offensive line coach. His guys are getting there, and that's why he's ticked. Look at him. I would not want to be on the offensive line at halftime in the locker room. I'll bet you he's going to start knocking some things over, crushing a couple of coat cans. Yeah, I would not get in Carl Moss' way. No. Buccaneers call timeout to stop the clock. Third and 24. Another timeout called by Tampa Bay. You don't think they're going to try to block another punt here, do you? They scored their first touchdown back in the first quarter. Al Singleton blocked the Jeff Beagle's punt and returns it into the end zone. Well, they found a weakness, and they know that Terry Irving right now for the Cardinals number 56 is thinking about it. He's thinking about what happened on that first one, on the first block. And once you start thinking about it, sometimes you tend to overcompensate. It's not easy. I mean, it's a thankless position. The only time anybody knows if you're doing anything at all on that punt protection team is if you let a guy beat you for the block. And nobody says thanks. You know, he's not on TV when he does his job 99 out of 100 times. It's only the one time that he misses. Here's Spiegel's hunting out of the end zone. And he pushes Williams back to the 38. With room into Cardinals territory to the 42. So with 26 seconds remaining, Buccaneers have one timeout left, 51 yards on the punt by Fiegels, a 20-yard return by Williams. Coming up on the Dockers' Khakis Halftime Report, scores and highlights from around the National Football League, and our Fox Sports ticker will bring you up to the second steps. That's all coming up on the Dockers' Khakis Halftime Report with James Brown, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Ronnie Long. I expect something incendiary to be said <laughs> during halftime, just like it is in the pregame show. Terry, I think, is on a roll. And we'll be back out of the studio again next week. Dipper in trouble, wrapped up by Swan and taken down. Sack number two today as Eric Swan and Brad Culpepper play Can You Top This with each other. One of the adjustments that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to make offensively at halftime is a way in which to deal with Eric Swan. They will begin to use two people on him. Right now, there's one guy on him, and we talked about it earlier. You cannot block Eric Swan with just one guy. George Diaz is just, you know, I mean, he's a big, strong guy, but Swan is not only big and strong, he's fast. He has the athletic ability of a linebacker, but the size of one of the biggest and strongest defensive linemen in the game. I like the way the Cardinals defensively have moved him around today. He's rushed from tackle, and he's also rushed from end. That's what you do when you have a very talented guy. You have to come up with creative ways to use him. Look at that. He's got his own billboard, <laughs> right? I mean, there's nothing there. It's just Eric Swan, 98. That's a tribute. <laughs> no, no doubt who we're talking about. No, I mean, that's just beautiful. Bilfer's pass complete to Riddell Anthony. Out of bounds. Clock stops with 15 seconds remaining. Getting back to Swan, he told us yesterday that he enjoys rotating amongst the different positions on the defensive line, a la Reggie White. You know, 
I, the, the thing that impresses me most about Eric Swan is his eagerness to get better. You know, it's so difficult for a guy with his physical stature, with his great athletic talent, to just sit back and ride it. But he's a guy who works day after day after day trying to become the best. Milford for the tight end, Jackie Harris. Out of bounds with eight seconds remaining in the first half. Now Tampa Bay needs to just take a shot right at the end zone. This will be fourth down, fourth and 11. With eight seconds to go, there you see Dilfer's numbers. On the season now, nine touchdowns, only two interceptions. Two years ago, he threw four touchdowns the yeah. entire season. I'll tell you what about Dilfer. He's got the arm to, let, to loft that baby all the way into the end zone. He can get it off. Nope, instead he is taken down. Third sack of the day by the Cardinals. This time it is Mark Smith. The rookie out of Auburn, seventh round draft pick, his first career sack. Loss of 10 yards, the clock stops with two seconds remaining, so now the Cardinals will have one last shot. Uh, seven sacks today in the first half, three trick plays, a block punt. And what else could we ask for? Well, quarterbacks have been sacked more so far this season, on average, than, than any other season in the 90s. They're, they're getting knocked around and knocked down. And when that happens, you have an advantage when you've got a guy like Kent Graham here or a guy like Trent Dilfer, a big-body quarterback that, that can take that kind of punishment. Buccaneers sent three defensive backs 30 yards deep. Final play of the first half. Graham airs it out, looking in zone, and it is picked off. Did he stay in bounds? Yeah, he did. It's not a Abraham. Touchback, and Ken Graham's got to swallow an interception on his statistics that really shouldn't be. He just put that up. I don't think his receivers knew he had that great arm strength to get it as far as he did. He threw that 60 yards, and that's the end of the first half. A wild first half here in Tampa. Three trick plays, seven sacks. What will happen over the next two hours? Fox NFL Sunday will continue with the Dockers Khakis halftime after these messages. Halftime in Tampa as the Buccaneers look to make it a perfect 5-0. They lead the Arizona Cardinals by the score of 12-7. Kenny Albert and Tim Green back with you from Houlihan Stadium. And Tim, coaches stressed the importance of special teams. Three trick plays in the first half. Yeah, and, and Tampa Bay leads by five, but they lead by a block punt. But the other interesting thing that's going on in this game is the Arizona Cardinals defense has shut down the Tampa Bay Bucks running game, which is the first time anyone's been able to do that so far this season. Now, you can expect more of Tampa Bay going back to that run game and trying to make it work in the second half. But even more of what you can expect is Trent Dilfer throwing the ball to Redell Anthony and Horace Copeland uh, as he did for that one touchdown pass. Only 13 yards on the ground for the combination of Warwick Dunn and Mike Allstott as we take a look at our first half highlight brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. And of course, the first half highlight is that blocked punt by Al Singleton. He blocks it and look at the bounce. I mean, you talk about things, we talked about it earlier bouncing your way the ball bouncing the bucks way they score the touchdown singleton returned it 28 yeah. yards and, and then Dilfer hits riddell anthony and that's what he's got to do and uh riddell anthony does a nice job going after knight and then kent graham returns throwing this nice pass to rob moore now i think that's what the cardinals need to do more of they need more of more they need more of Sanders. They need more of Ted Graham putting the ball in the air. I know Vince Tobin's a defensive coach and he likes to run, but if you look at these numbers, you can see that's where the Cardinals have really had their success, on the, on the uh, passing game, and they've also dominated the clock. That means a worn out, tired Tampa Bay defense. You're gonna see defensive linemen rotating in and out this game, 
especially in the second half. Tampa Bay's offense effectively shut down by the Arizona Cardinals, but for the one big pass play from Trent Dilfer to Redell Anthony. Kevin Butler gets the second half started as Carl Williams let it bounce, and then it rolled out of bounds on the three-yard line. Boy, Williams re read the bounce on that. Because that ball, when it's bouncing around out there. The ball will be put in lay, play 30 yards in the spot of the kick. So the Buccaneers will start in excellent field position. Yeah, but if that ball kind of, you know, has a backspin on it and bites like a nine iron, all of a sudden, Carl Williams is sitting there and, and he's got to take it up and run with it because the ball's not going into the end zone. But watch how he reads the spin. He, he looks at the, the spin of the ball and he's confident that the thing's going to go out of bounds. And then, of course, that's a penalty. 30 yards from the spot of the kick gives them Tampa Bay the ball on the 40. Like the third baseman looking to see if the ball, the bunt would roll foul or stay fair. So the Buccaneers go to work on their first possession of this second half. Warren Dunn gains two yards. He was held to just three yards on five carries in the first half. Buccaneers just 13 yards on the ground. What you do as a coaching staff when you go into the locker room at halftime is you tell your guys, we're starting over again. And if you start over when you go to Tampa Bay's offense, we're starting over for Tony Dungy. is getting back to the run game, back to Allstott, and back to Dunn. They came in as the best tandem in the National Football League when you add up the numbers. Total yards, touchdowns over the first four games. Second down and eight. Hilbert incomplete. The intended receiver was Horace Copeland. And it was nice coverage by Aeneas Williams. Dilfer called him the most complete cornerback in the National Football League, and he's right. Now here's this is this is a defense shutting down an offense. Look at this, minus six yards, mi minus 11, minus six. Now here's the one big drive that Tampa Bay did put together. Remember, they didn't put that drive together on the ground, running the ball as they have all season up to this point. They did it with Trent Dilfer throwing. Four on his shooters for the Buccaneers on third down and eight. As Dilfer's pass is broken up by Tom Knight, the first round draft pick out of Iowa. Not a piece of it. Well, Tom Knight's there. There's double coverage on the receiver. Why? Because we talked about Dave McGinnis mixing it up. One, two, only three rushers putting pressure on Dilfer. Now, that means there are almost two guys to defend each receiver out in the pattern. That means Knight knows he's got help from Kwame Lasseter over the top. enables him to break up that pass. Kevin Williams calls for a fair catch. So the Cardinals will start out from their own 19-yard line when we return. 40-yard punt by Barnhart. Tim Green with Kenny Albert back in Tampa Bay. You know, Kenny, people love this logo here, especially kids. I told you a couple weeks ago, my three-year-old saw that on all Stott's helmet during a tape game. He said, I want that. They put that thing up on a, a one-way mirror. They put a bunch of designs up and found the ones that kids stopped and put on the most. Then they made it their logo. Leland McElroy wrapped up by John Lynch. In fact, stores here in Tampa have been selling out of Buccaneers merchandise at a record pace. Yeah, well, a lot of that's because they're 4-0, but another part of it is it's just a good design. I mean, people like this stuff, and when your three-year-old is minded, turns to you and says, hey, I, I want to be that guy there with the, with the skull on his head. By the way, that's that's what my three-year-old wants to be for, for Halloween. I don't think that might have something to do with it. Nobody said that about the old Buccaneers. No, before. nobody <laughs> wanted to be a swashbuckler with a sword or you know, a wink or a patch on his eye or whatever. But they like the skull and the sword. Grand pass and set it for Leland McElroy. And a flag thrown. Well, I like the idea of throwing to the running back, but I'd rather see it go to Gedman. Holding, number 75 of the offense. 10 yards, repeat second down. That's Lomas Brown on the hold. He's blocking Reagan Upshaw today. Now here's what the Arizona Cardinals have done with their passes, and it's a pretty nice distribution. You see there, eight to the wide receivers, only one to my partner, Chris Gedney, 
but five to the running back, most, most of those to Larry Centers. I think the more that they throw the ball into the center, mm -hmm. the centers and Gedney, the more open Rob Moore is going to be on the perimeter and Frank Sanders. They need to use that passing game. Second down and 17. Flags come flying again as Graham airs it out. Look at that. And the catch is made by Rob Moore. Now, I believe Kent Graham drew Brad Culpepper off sides. Yes. Yes, with, with his hard count. And that is the second time Moore has beaten the rookie out of Virginia, Rondé Barber, with the deep ball. You know, Moore Upside, is... Upside, the defense, and he's declined. Sure. Nose guard. Nose guard. <laughs> Culpepper doesn't even get his name called. He's just nose guard. But watch Rob Moore. Watch him run this on Rondé Barber. But I want you to watch what he does with his body. You see this? Right here is where he makes it happen. Look at that. Arm over, slaps his hand down. That's being physical as a wide receiver. Again, it's a little thing, but it turns into a big thing. Miscommunication as Graham overthrows Moore. Moore, five receptions today, 103 yards. His 13th career 100-yard game. That you mentioned moments ago, so you want... Graham to go four to more to and Moore. over the center to centers. <laughs> and also to Anything Gedney. else? And also to Gedney, and not just because Gedney's an old Syracuse teammate of mine, but because I like Gedney's hands over the center. And I like more of more. And that's what they're gonna do because it's working. And when something works, you keep doing it. More also by a Syracuse yeah, University. Yeah. With a delayed handoff to McElroy. Works his way to the 45-yard line. Wow, how about Pittsburgh? 31-6 at halftime over the Tennessee Oilers. Yeah. Well, Pittsburgh's powerful. That doesn't surprise me. What surprises me is that they're 1-2. and two. Is that a surprise? Detroit? No, because when, when Scott Mitchell, their quarterback, is on, you know what Barry Sanders is going to do. He's always going to be good. There's Leland McElroy. Eight carries for 27 yards. And when that's happening, you're saying, look, it's three and change. For Perry, that's not getting it done. So go ahead and rely on this guy. Let him make it happen. Grab out of the shotgun. Third and eight. Four Cardinals wideouts. Grant steps up, throws, and the pass is complete. That's a nice close, pass. close to the first down yeah. marker. Anthony Edwards hold it in. You know, Kent Graham is enjoying nice protection it, it's it's spotty because we've seen Culpepper in there a couple times but on that play right there he had a nice pocket from which to throw from watch it here this is what he sees now you saw him taking the time to work on the pickup and the, the rush pickup that's what he was doing when we saw him pointing and talking he was telling his, his offensive lineman this is how I want you to block it give me the protection Graham on first down, complete for another Cardinals first down. This time it is Kevin Williams. Yeah, and, and, and Graham's happy. I mean, Graham loves this because they're relying on him, and he wants to be relied on. And he was he came into this season, and it, he was an unknown guy, and people said, gee, you know, he didn't start that many games. He played for the Giants, played a couple games in Ohio State. They didn't know what they had, but we saw him in the first game against Cincinnati, and even though they lost that game, Kent Graham really stood up and stood out. Two tight end set. First down on the Buccaneers 24 yard line. Graham to the air once again, and this time the pass was short. The intended receiver was Frank Sanders. Now the timing be between Graham and Sanders has had been off. While the timing between Graham and Moore, except for the one miscue on the pass, has been on. Graham and Sanders are not on the same wavelength. So, Dick Jamison, the offensive coordinator, needs to continue again. More of more. Just give me more. Bob Moore scored the only Cardinals touchdown back in the first half on a 21-yard pass from Kent Graham. Second down and 10. Three wide receivers. And Graham with the quick slant to the tight end. Pat Carter dragged out on the Buccaneers 19. This is where the Cardinals are, are really at their best offensively. When they get into the red zone, they've had great success scoring. There it is, fourth in the National Football League. Nine times they've been there, not a lot, not a lot of trips. But they come away with some pretty good 
points. Six touchdowns in nine times. This will be, they're in their tent. This is the red zone here. Everything from that side of the 20. Not that side of Vince Tobin's race, but that side of the 20. That's it. Graham on third down. And set it for Rob Moore. Coverage on the play from Donnie Abraham. So the field goal unit trots out for Arizona. But I think that Arizona has found what they want to do. They want to put the ball in Graham's hands. And there you see Dick Jamison talking to him. And work that ball down the field via the pass game. Just keep going with it. Butler three of four on the season. This a 38-yard attempt. Fiegels is the holder. And Butler's kick is good. Officially a 37-yard Kevin Butler field goal, and the Buccaneers' lead is now two. Kenny Albert, Tim Green back in Tampa. Tony Dungy's Buccaneers, 4-0, the only undefeated team in the NFC. They led 12-0, it is now 12-10. Carl Williams and Riddell Anthony back deep for the Buccaneers. Even though Tony Dungy has the lead, he knows he has some problems. He's got a Cardinal defense that has been able to control his offense. And he's got a Cardinal offense that has found a way to beat his defense. Three wide receivers take advantage of the injuries in the secondary. Line drive kickoff by Butler. This is Carl Williams. Stays on his feet. Flag on the play, finally dragged down by Anthony Edwards after a 24-yard return. It's a face mask Oops. against the Cardinals. Now that will either be a 5-yard penalty or a 15-yard penalty, depending on the severity face of the Face mask, 5 yards, number 52 on the return. Mike Caldwell. Yep, that means five yards means it's incidental. So the Buccaneers to the offense when we return to Tampa. It's Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports. Play action on first down, Delta's pass complete. Near midfield, Riddell Anthony. And that is his fifth reception of the game. This one good for 16 yards. The Cardinals are better defensively when they lock up Aeneas Williams and Tommy Knight man-to-man. -to -man. This is the zone coverage. So there's Aeneas. Now he gives the chip on Anthony, but then he stays to cover this zone out here. There's a zone over the top, but Anthony is going to find the soft spot. The Cardinals are better when they take Aeneas Williams and they say, you got this guy, Tommy Knight, you got that guy. Hang him around and cover him. Spins off the first tackle attempt inside Cardinals territory. The Arizona Cardinals have done an excellent job restricting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers run game because of these big guys right here up front. You, know, you got you got Wilson, you got Simeon Rice. You got Swan right there. You got Michael Bankston. I mean, those guys are big and physical and they're heavy, and, and they know how to battle in there in the trenches and win the battle on the line of scrimmage. Inside the 45, Michael Bankston made the stop after the gain of four. And that, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. They double-team Swan on that play, and when you double-team Swan, then Bankston or, or one of the other guys has got to step up and make the play, and this is exactly what happens. Watch Swan. He's going to come up here. There's going to be two blockers on him. All right? That means there's one guy on Bankston. And watch him come right off the block and make the play. Two guys on Swan, single on Bankston. He steps up and does the job. Third down and three. Four wide receivers. Roper can't find anyone. Keeps it himself and looks to be shy be about a half yard shy of the first down mark. Yeah, and it's going to be holding on Tampa Bay anyway, so it'll be interesting to see if they 
just decline the penalty and take the fourth down, which is what I think that they will do. They may send them back for field position reasons. But the incredible thing about that play there was three holding. Pressures. Number 70 of the offense, 10 yards, repeat third down. That's the right tackle, Jason Odom. Yeah, and he's working on Eric Swan. Now, we've seen Swan draw a pair of holding calls. Here's Swan up here again, playing it in. Now, they've only got three guys rushing. And Tampa Bay has five guys blocking. The problem is, it's one-on-one -on -one with Swan. They need to put two guys on Eric Swan. So this forces the Buccaneers back to their own 46-yard line. Third down and 13. This is what they did in Dallas. They brought everybody up to the line, and they put the heavy blitz on Troy Aikman. Quick drop and a quick slam. Wow, first down and a flat throw. I'll tell you what, these guys did a great job blocking downfield. They may have the holding penalty. It may be on Harris or Rob Thomas. I think it's going to be. But doggone it, they did a fine job of blocking downfield and springing that thing for a first down. Holding. Number 80 of the offense. Yep, it's Ten Jackie yards. Harris. Repeat third down. But... Gosh, you got to give them credit. I mean, that's what makes this play. That's team football. Yeah, it's a team game. Yeah, they got a lot of stars. But, man, when you get guys downfield, receivers and tight ends, throwing blocks the way they just did, you got to be happy. You know you've got something special. You also got to hold it. <laughs> so, so, again, it will be third down and 13. Good effort by Copeland on the previous play. This time, Bill Fish cuts it off to Warwick Dunn. And he is stopped four yards short. That's Aeneas nice. Williams came up to make the stop yeah. on Dunn. That's nice defense. They knew that coming in. They knew that when Warwick Dunn got the ball in his hand, everyone had to run from all over the field. Now, Aeneas Williams is the cornerback. So he's over on the other side of the field playing pass coverage, thinking third and long, we got to defend the pass. But he runs all the way across the field, and he makes the tackle on Warwick Dunn. And we're seeing good football here today, Kenny. We're seeing two defenses that are running all over the field and making plays. Bobby Barnhart from his own 45-yard line. End over end. Kevin Williams lets it go. It takes a bucket here. It's bounced, and they down it inside the five-yard line. Kenny Gant, special team star downfield, 41 yards on the punt by Barnhart. Let's see, three years ago that would have been the Los Angeles Rams and the Los Angeles Raiders. Yeah, I agree with Howie Long when he said the pregame about the Raiders. That's a good football team that's ready to explode. Larry Centers takes the handoff on first down across the five to the six-yard line. A gain of three before he was wrapped up by John Lynch. Well, Kenny, we talk about the Cardinals going to the pass game, and they have two runs and seven passes in the second half. That means that his offensive line's got to give him protection. And that draws your attention to this guy, Brad Culpepper, who really has, done, has had the game of his life, at least in the National Football League. He's on the sideline now, but he's got three sacks on the day. Play action on second down, and Graham has the first down as he hits Rob Moore out to the 19, a gain of 13 yards. Well, while that passing game's working, maybe Tampa Bay needs to get this guy back in here. I mean, they need to get some heat on Graham. Here's heat. There's Culpepper. There's one. And then there's two. They double team him, then they come off the double, and he gets it. And then coming up on three. So a big day for Culpepper. Maybe they need to get their, uh, their secret weapon back into this uh, into this pass run. Three first half sacks for Culpepper. Leland McElroy across the 25 to the 27 yard line. I think that Leland McElroy will have his biggest runs in the second half for the Arizona Cardinals because they're opening up the run game with the pass. Now, conventional wisdom says you use the run game to open up the pass. But if your passing game is working for you, as it is for the Cardinals right now, sometimes you use the pass game to open up the run. You start hitting to your receivers on the perimeter, loosen that defense up, and then you can turn Leland McElroy in. Second down. 
McElroy up the middle, across the 30, first down, and right now for a McDonald's game break, James Brown in our Fox Television Center. Kenny, you've seen some interesting plays here. Take a look at this one by Green Bay. Far as pass intended for Terry Mickens, deflected into the hands of Bill Schrader. Seven-yard score is good. Two-point conversion isn't. Lions nursing a two-point lead over the Packers. Back to Kenny Albert and Tim Green. Thanks, JB and Tim. You and I both had an opportunity to watch Bill Schrader in the World League, and he was one of the most viable players over in Europe. Yep, another World League guy making big in the National Football League. Graham to Moore. He escapes the first nice, tackle. Nice. Rob Moore, he, he wants to play big. You know, it, look, it's easy for him. He's made wonderful catches today. He's over 100 yards. He's got a touchdown. It looks like he's hurt. That but is the seventh reception of the afternoon. But the impressive thing is, he, he, I mean, he could catch that ball and then fall down on the first hit, but that's not enough for him. He wants to play big. He's got seven catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown. See this? He could just take this hit and go down. But look at that. He shirks him, a la Mike Allstott, and then brought down from behind. Graham has connected with eight different receivers this afternoon. Here we take one more look as Abraham... And more came together. Back in a moment from Tampa with the Buccaneers leading by two. Related, starring James Belushi and Tupac Shakur in his last screen performance. Opens October 8th everywhere. Rated R. Back to live action. Two and a half to go in this third quarter with the Buccaneers leading the Cardinals by the score of 12-10. Tampa Bay led 12-0. Cardinals chipping away. Buccaneers leading despite only five first downs in the game. Yeah, and you look how they're doing it. Arizona's doing it with the passing. Passing on first down, getting their first down through the air. They need to continue to use that thing. It's working. Graham looking to the sideline. Looking to hit more. It was shaken up moments ago, but it's obviously all right. <laughs> We talked earlier, Kenny, about how Tampa Bay is a little short in their secondary with Anthony Parker out and then Charles Mincy going off before. You see Floyd Young, 31 here, coming in. He was just activated from the practice squad. So, Yesterday. Yeah, so you know you've got, you've got a, a little bit of a personnel disadvantage for Tampa Bay, so the Cardinals want to come out and do exactly what they're doing, three wide receivers. Let them put their practice squad guys on the field. Graham pump fakes on second down, dumps it off to Sean Johnson. Run out of bounds yeah. by, by Hardy Nickers, yeah, Nickers who's bowled, bowled over a couple of guys on the sidelines. Yeah. He's got that thing figured out, and that's what Hardy Nickerson does. He's a great athlete, he's strong, he's fast, but he's also smart. And he saw that pump fake before, and now Hardy Nickerson is zeroed in to what is a pump fake on a screen and what's the real thing. He knows it now. They're not going to be able to screen on Tampa Bay anymore. Not unless Hardy Nickerson is locked man-to-man -man on another receiver and running the other way. Third and ten. Graham out of the shotgun. Four Cardinal wideouts. And the pass is deflected. That was a problem for Graham two weeks ago in the yep. game against the Redskins. Yep. Well, it's a problem this time because they don't pick up the blitz. It's a cornerback blitz. Tyrone Leggett comes untouched from the outside. There's no one to pick him up. He's going to come right here. And that's where Graham's going to try, try to throw it. Now he's throwing to the right spot. You want to throw to the area where the blitzer has abandoned. So it's the right spot, but Leggett using nice athleticism to knock that ball down. Carl Williams from the 14-yard line. Across the 30, across the 35. He fumbled. The question is, was he down? The headline's been Sanford Rivers was right there. And it will be Tampa well, Bay see, football. I see an official's hat off, which usually tells you that someone has stepped out of bounds. Either that or the wind blew his hat off. <laughs> but there's a hat off all the way back on the 11-yard line. 21 yards on the return by Williams. Yes, he was down, yep. and then J.J. McCleskey forced it free. 
So a good field position for the Buccaneers, leading 12-10. First down from their own 36-yard line. There's the hat. He had a run and run down, so I, so the hat just fell off. He Tommy pull it off. You know, he's got to get one of those straps. He's got the straps for his glasses. He needs a hat strap. That's Tommy Moore without the hat strap. Warren Gunn rolled off the first tackle attempt by Ronald McKinnon. Yeah, and who's and there to the get couple. him? Yeah, who's there to get him? Aeneas Williams. That's running through the football. That's playing total defense. It looked like they had Warwick Dunn down right there, right in the center of the line of scrimmage. But he sprung out, and it wasn't as if anybody had abandoned their space. Aeneas Williams playing excellent, disciplined defense. Watch it right here. Look at this. McKinnon meets the block. Nice job. Thinks he makes the tackle. When Dunn springs out, look at look who's waiting there. Aeneas Williams. That's great football. It's team football. It's something you can't teach. You just have to have it inside you. Gilbert on second and eight. The intended receiver was the tight end Jackie Harris on McKinnon on the coverage. This is great defense. Trent Dilfer told us this was going to be an ugly game. He knew he had a challenge defensively. Look at it. Look what they've done. Fourth in the NFL, 147 yards a game until today. Only 22 yards on the ground. But remember, Dunn has broken a couple of big yeah, ones. But we saw a play where you would expect that Dunn to have broken it, but Aeneas Williams was waiting there for it. If the Cardinals keep playing solid defense like that and discipline all around the ball, they'll continue to hold yeah! it. Look out at eight. Tilfer is picked off. Aeneas Williams. Touchdown, Cardinals. <laughs> Only the third interception. Dilfer has thrown this season, and Aeneas Williams returns it and ties a club record, his fifth career touchdown on an interception. He ties team president Larry Wilson's record. And this is exactly why Trent Dilfer yesterday described Aeneas Williams as the most complete cornerback in the league. He said Deion Sanders is faster. He's got more speed and a little better reaction time, but Aeneas Williams does it all. Great reaction, physical, can beat your receivers up, can also play coverage, can run, but the most important thing is this guy is a relentless studier of film, and he knows when to take a chance. He took a chance, made the interception, and turned this game around single-handedly. And the Cardinals will go for two. Perfect. And they've got it. Frank Sanders. So the Cardinals with the two-point conversion. And they now lead the Buccaneers 18-12. Correction to Larry Wilson, the Cardinals vice president. Ah, uh, you promoted him. Vice president. I imagine he probably got a little excited and said, hey, he just got made president. So Watch. Aeneas Williams ties yeah. his club record. Watch Aeneas Williams. Look at this. He just jumps it. He, he reads it, and he jumps it. He moves to the ball before the ball is out of Trent Dilfer's hand. And he returned it 42 yards. There it is. The ball is right there. You know, we talked about the Arizona Cardinals being better on the man. Well, there's, a, there's why they played some zone. You say, well, how come they're, they're better in man? Why don't you play man? Here's the reason. Sometimes you play zone, and Aeneas Williams gets to sit underneath in an underneath zone, and he picks it off, and there's the two-point conversion. Buccaneers, Frank Sanders. Buccaneers unsuccessful on their two-point conversion attempt earlier. They also missed an extra point. So Aeneas Williams, his fifth career, Interception for a touchdown. And the Cardinals, who 12 12 nothing, have scored 18 consecutive points. And they have quieted the crowd here in Tampa. Across the 20th flag is thrown out of play. With 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the Cardinals on top. This one is against Tampa Bay. Holding number 53 on the return, 10 yards, first down. 
Well, this is the toughest defense that Tampa Bay's had to face as far as their effectiveness. I think San Francisco's got an outstanding defense, but right now these guys are playing Tampa Bay even tougher than San Francisco did. The challenge to Trent Dilfer is going to be to make it happen through the air because the Cardinals came into this game committed to stopping the run. They've done it. They wanted Trent Dilfer to have to beat them, and now he does. Dilfer and the Buccaneers from their own 12-yard line. All stop to the 14, a gain of two. It is Ron McKinnon once again who made the tackle. And that will do it for the third quarter from Tampa. Buccaneers led 12-0. They now trail 18-12. Bucks NFL Sunday will continue after these messages. 18-12 lead for the Arizona Cardinals as we welcome you back to Tampa on Fox NFL Sunday. Kenny Albert with Tim Green and Tim. The Buccaneers now in the unusual position, at least for themselves, as far as the 97 season is concerned, of having to come from behind. Well, the amazing thing is that the Cardinals defensively have been able to, to shut down Michael Allstott and work done. No one has done that so far this season. Now it's going to be up to Trent Dilfer to use that passing game and get them back into it. Buccaneers with only 26 yards on the ground through the first three quarters. Second down, this is all stop. And we talked about the uh, job the Cardinals defensive unit has done on the combination of all stop and done. And we spoke with Eric Swan and we asked Eric, how do you stop Warwick Dunn? And basically what you have to do is, is have your uh, get responsibility, squeeze off the get, wall off the line, cause Warwick Dunn to come to the line, stop his feet, and basically look for a hole. He's not going to find a hole, and then we can shut him down. And that, Kenny, is the discipline that we've talked about. We saw Aeneas Williams doing it. We've seen Eric Swan really dominating in the line of scrimmage. Two sacks, but also filling his gap on the run, and then everybody filling the hole that they have to fill. Dilford on third down, and Riddell Anthony unable to make the catch. So Dilfer, besides the one drive, the one touchdown throw to Riddell Anthony, not beating the Cardinals. He beat him on that one play. And remember the touchdown drive stayed alive thanks to the trickery on special teams. The fake punt. No fake this time. Kevin Williams takes it out of bounds close to midfield. So the Cardinals, who have gained the momentum, they lead by six. And they will start in excellent field position on their own 49-yard line. That is one ugly Tampa Bay skeleton buccaneer thing there. <laughs> Why don't you go tell him? I mean, that, that is an ugly one. Six-point Cardinals lead. Leland McElroy stopped at the line of scrimmage. Okay, I told you that the side judge, Tommy Moore, has got to get a strap for his hat. He's got the strap there for his glasses, but he needs a hat one because he's confusing me up here. Now, here's, here's the punt return there, and you're going to see him right at the top. Look at that. There's his hat. And there he is with no hat on his head again. And the reason why he's confusing me is that at Fox Sports, we're always trying to get better. And we're always watching tape during the week, learning the rules. And one of the big emphasis this year was that when the official's hat goes off, it means someone's out of bounds. Now it just means he's got no hat strap. The only thing out of bounds was his hat. <laughs> yeah. Larry Centers took a hard hit in Buccaneers territory. There it is. See the, the glasses strap, but the, is the hat too big? Well, it's either too big or he needs to, you know, seriously, he needs to get just a little, little rubber band and staple it to the brim and just run that thing right, right there like that. Run it right under his chin. And no one will really be able to see it. You run it right behind your ears and underneath your chin, like, like a party, like a party hat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. just like a, you know, at a kid's birthday party. Third down and eight. Charles Nixon has a turn. Nice blitz pickup. And Brown's pass is complete. 
it is Rob Moore once again his eighth catch today and a gain of 24 yards Look at the pickup here. Cardinals offensive line doing a great job. And look at the coverage on Moore. The underneath coverage was a defensive lineman, Steve White. There's Moore limping off again. You remember he was hurt earlier, and they were looking at his knee. Look at that. 11 times thrown to, caught eight of 149 yards with a touchdown. And that really has been the way the Cardinals have been able to move the ball this game. Reverse to LaShawn Johnson inside the 20. Graham faked the handoff with then Johnson coming around. And the Cardinals are in the red zone. This is where they're at their best. Kenny, by the way, we're getting word from the NFL that I'm wrong about the hat. He doesn't need a hat strap. He took it off on purpose. Can you believe it comes that quick? Took it off on purpose? They took it off on purpose because someone did go out of bounds. So I was right. I was right about the hat being off to go out of bounds. But the person who went out of bounds was not the first to touch the ball. That would be a penalty. Right. So anytime a player does go out of bounds, the hat comes off. If that player is the first to touch the ball, then the flag is thrown. Right. So the hat was thrown, but the flag wasn't. No I strap needed. Yeah, I don't think they like my crack about the, you know, the rubber band in the statement. We'll keep a close eye on Tommy Moore. First down on the Buccaneers, 15-yard line. Cardinals on the move, leading 18-12. Debney in motion. Graham can't find anyone in trouble, taken down by Chidi Ahanatu. Great coverage. Great coverage by Tampa Bay secondary. Buccaneers fifth sack today. They flooded the strong side with Gedney and both their wide receivers to the right side. And look at Kent Graham's looking there all the way. He wants to throw it. He's got no place to throw it. And then Chidi Ahanatu takes advantage of it. That's a covered sack. But you still celebrate it the same way. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's the, the Mamba or the... Well, one thing it is is the second sack of yeah. the season for Ahanatu. And a loss of 10. Sanders, the man in motion. Graham on second down, incomplete, intended for Sanders. Double coverage from Derek Brooks and Tyrone Leggett. Well, Vince Tobin's uh, offense has been able to move the ball up and down the field with the passing game, but so far in this second half, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have, have really done a great job in the red zone. Again, coming into this game, the Cardinals number four in the league in the red zone, converting nine times into six touchdowns. One for one today. Third down and 20. Graham out of the shotgun. Graham looking for more. Donnie Abraham on the coverage. Graham again took a hit but it was a nice decision because Rob Moore was being covered by 31 Floyd Young and when you have one of your stars being covered by a guy who's just moved up from the practice squad you, you can put that ball up for grabs the thing that Kent Graham did not do was make it a catchable ball for anyone Butler hit from 37 earlier this will be a 43 yard attempt this season long is 47. Butler's kick is wide to the right. Butler no good from 43. Cardinals lead remains six. Kevin Butler wide right. So the Cardinals lead remains 12. Buccaneers back to work. And they will start from their own 33-yard line, trailing by six. 
And the Buccaneers defense has spent a lot of time on the field yeah. today. And then this right here is because Arizona figured out that they've got to throw the football. They started throwing it, and they've chalked up a lot of yards in the second half. Under 10 minutes remaining. Gilbert on first half brings it out for Warren Dunn. And right now for a McDonald's game break. Nick Brown in our Fox Television Center. Can he upset in the making at your place? Try also up in the Silver Dome. Dorsey Levins with the handoff. Headed for what appeared to be the go-ahead touchdown. He fumbles the ball. Stripped by Robert Bailey. Lions now have it. Lions also have the lead by five. Take it back. Tampa Bay. Kenny Alvarez and Tim Green. And next week, it will be the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, at Lambeau. They got everything. They got the studio show going there. They got John and Pat. Second and nine. Pass complete. Jackie Harris. Terry Irving on the stop. Trent Dilfer really has never faced such a disciplined defense, but an aggressive defense at the same time. I mean, if, if, you, if you like Arizona, you got to be hopeful. Look, look at the numbers they've held Dilford to. Now, this guy coming in was the number one rated quarterback in the National Football League. Today, he's, he's under 50%. He has one touchdown, but he also has one interception. That was Aeneas Williams' for a touchdown going the other way. Only 71 yards by the end. Third down and five. Four wide receivers. Short drop, Dilfer lobs it out, and he overthrows Horace Copeland. I, I mean, this is just great defensive football. You've got to give Dave McGinnis and Vince Tobin credit for putting together this game plan. Sure, it's frustrating. Look, Jameer Miller, they think he's the fourth rusher. He drops out in coverage. Again, there's only three guys rushing. If we can stop, there's three guys rushing. There's one, two, three, four, five guys blocking three. That means there's eight off in coverage and there's too many guys in coverage to enable Trent Dilfer's receivers to get open. And it takes a Buccaneers bounce. Williams let it go. He thought it would roll into the end zone. Instead, the Cardinals pin inside the five. Brand new episodes tonight. In the X-Files, you can't forget that. That's a great show. Everybody on Fox is getting their own show. JB's got one. Terry Bradshaw's got a talk show. Even Tim Green along with Ron Pitts yeah. on the Fox Sportsnet. Absolutely. NFL Total Access. Yeah, and, and, and you see this play with Warren Sapp. That's the kind of thing you get on Total Access. It's on the Sunshine Channel, right? Sunshine, Sunshine Network, here, Network in here in Florida. Fox Sports Arizona. Fox Sports Arizona. And what they do is NFL Films puts a wire on a guy like Warren Sapp and you get to hear what's going on down there when he makes a play like he just did there. You know, you get to hear him running through and you get to see a close-up film of him and he busts through, and then you get to hear what he says after he does it. Well, That's you, what the show's about, total action. You and Ron Pitts get to compare notes, stories from the various games yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. It's fun. Graham out of the end zone, looking to hit McElroy. Instead, it will be third and ten. Now, I'll tell you what's running through these guys' minds right now. The Arizona Cardinals players are thinking about the two games that they let slip away in the fourth quarter. They're thinking about Cincinnati, where they squandered a 21-point lead, 21-3 lead. They're thinking about what happened in Washington, about the fumbles of Leland McElroy in overtime. Yeah, and, and that haunts you. And that's the thing that they've got to overcome. That's the barrier that the Cardinals need to break through. Graham on third and ten is picked off by John Lynch. Lynch inside the five. Exactly what we were just talking about. Pick Rams in a shoving He put that ball up for Rob Moore to bring down. And I don't think Rob Moore even realized the ball was in the air. Moore never even turned around for it. Look at that. He just 
he, he wasn't looking up in the air. He was looking right at John Lynch. And they ruled Lynch down at the spot of the interception. So instead of the Cardinals five, Buccaneers yeah. will start from the 35. And, and that is what is your downfall. The downfall of any team in the National Football League is turnovers. The Cardinals with three more turnovers today. Only one going the other way. That puts them from minus five to minus seven. There's Morris Dunn. Albeit one of the three turnovers came at the end of the half on a Hail Mary, but Graham had only thrown one interception coming in over the first three games to today. So the Buccaneers with a golden opportunity following the first interception of the season by Lynch, seventh of his career. I mean, you have to believe that that's just some kind of a miscue because Rob Moore never turned around to look for that ball. The pick back four is done. Spins inside the 30. And you see that, you see Dunn making people miss tackles. The reason why it doesn't matter, the reason why Warwick Dunn's numbers are, have been so limited today is because there's always other guys there to make up for it. 10 rushes, 16 at 1.6 yards a carry. But as we talked about, Kenny, he has the capacity to break one loose at any time. The reason he has not broken one of those loose today is because of the discipline of the Cardinals' defense. I hope nobody's mentioned the Sports Illustrated jinx to Warwick Dunn this week. I, I don't think he pays any attention to that stuff at all. He is one confident player. Still lives in a $31 a night hotel room. Tight end day four in motion. John fumbles. That's big. This is, a, this is an enormous series by the Cardinals defense. They took a turnover. They took the interception by Lynch. And they have held Tampa Bay. Now it's fourth down, Tampa Bay's going to go for it. This is a huge play. This is the kind of play that you say, if we could just hold them on this play, we win the football game. Mm -hmm. if, if they don't hold them on this one, this will be the play that they point to on Monday morning and say, ah, on that fourth down play, had we only held them. Fourth and six. Four wide out. Rumble steps up, throws. Dilfer told us yesterday when the Cardinals came on the blitz, he was going to make a throw at Aeneas Williams. There's the blitz. There's Aeneas Williams with the coverage on Carl Williams. And it's a touchdown. That's knowing your opponent, scouting your opponent, and beating him in a critical situation. Second career touchdown for Carl Williams. The first came out of punt return. And the Buccaneers are back on top. Carl Williams signed as a free agent last year out of Texas A&M Kingsville, a school which has four players on the Buccaneers roster. And as uh, Houston was about to approach yeah, now the football come, again, it blows off. Yeah, here comes the holder. I, but I don't think it's, well, I think something's wrong with the team. I think it's a bad team. You see, look how, I mean, there's no, there's no posts there for that thing to lean up against. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual looking team. So Rondé Barber will perform the duties yeah. as the holder. Well, whatever lets Houston kick it into the end zone, I'm sure everybody's happy to do. Kevin Williams with Sean Johnson back deep. Williams hesitated, out takes it out. And it's up and it's shy of the 20-yard line. He should have stayed back. Yeah. Well, if you're going to kick it off like that, Michael Youth said they'll let him kick it off an old shoe. They don't care what he does. Well, Tim, as you spoke about, in their two previous losses, turnovers have played the Cardinals. Late turnovers. Week one in Cincinnati. Under two minutes to go. Larry Centers fumbles the football. It's recovered by the Bengals. And moments later... 
Jeff Blake would hit Carl Pickens for the Cincinnati victory. And two weeks later, in overtime, opening game at Jack Ken Cook Stadium, Leland McElroy fumbles. It's recovered by Derek Smith. And then Gus Barat to Michael Westbrook. Back to live action on first down. Graham to Larry Centers. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. So in their previous two losses, a late turnover led to each defeat. And the Cardinals' lone victory over yeah. time over the Dallas Cowboys here today. Graham picked off by John Lynch. And the Buccaneers score the go-ahead touchdown. Yeah, and, and in both cases before, as in today, the Cardinals' defense being beat in the passing game to allow the go-ahead. Tommy Knight, the first two losses, and then Aeneas Williams was, was beaten on this last play by Carl Williams. Second and four. Chris no. Gedney, the intended receiver. Now, now he made me look bad. I've been talking about Gedney's hands all game long. All day yesterday, I talked to Vince Tobin. I said, this guy's got great hands. Can't grab this guy's got great hands. And I can't believe he, he just dropped it. Very, very unlike Chris Gedman. So it will be third down and four. Buccaneers scored the go-ahead touchdown on a fourth and six. As Delfer hit Carl Williams for 31 yards. And the touchdown. Sixth drop pass today by the Cardinals. Graham on third down fires. It's short. complete but short of the first down. Frank Sanders and Graham wants the ball placed where the catch nope. was made. There it is, but that's, it's still one yard shy. That's Frank Sanders' job to get to the stick before he makes the catch. He's got to do that. That's his job. Now, one of the things Frank Sanders does is he'll adjust when he sees the safety over the top. He'll adjust as to not take as big a hit after the play but when the whole thing is on the line you, you can't you got to disregard the hit now it's fourth down and one final shuffling personnel yeah, the whole thing comes down to this buccaneers scored on a fourth down moments ago final video fourth and one Graham to the air larry Sanders. First down and more across the 35, and the Cardinals continue their drive. That's great confidence in a great player. You saw centers fumble the ball in Cincinnati. Now it's crunch time. It's fourth and short. Instead of going to the run, they're going to the air. That's where they've been most effective today, so I like the call. Who do you throw it to? Larry Center. You put it in the hands of a guy. You know you kind of look and slip, and that's the kind of relentlessness and determination we talked about with Mike Allstott earlier. Gain of 13. Under three minutes to go. Three wide receivers. Play fake. Graham rolling right. Hit Sanders. Nice. And he's out of bounds at the 48-yard line. So the clock stops with 2.44 to go. A gain of 11. Nice adjustment by Frank Sanders. Now that's putting your body on the line because the ball was thrown behind Frank. And he turned around and he opened up his ribs and his back and everything else to any kind of hit anybody was going to put on him. And he opened it up and said, I'm going to make this play. I'm going to make this first down. What a wonderful guy to talk to, huh, Kenny? I mean, he walks in the room and he lights up the whole place with his smile and his demeanor and his attitude. He has 30 friends and family here today. Yeah. He made the trip across to Fort Lauderdale. Thomas with three timeouts remaining. From the 48, play fake, flag on the play as Graham goes back across the field and hits Sanders. <laughs> but a flag was thrown. Clock stops with 2.33 remaining. Cheating a hot or two shaken up. They're going to be holding, I believe. Illegal substitution. Nope. Number 83 in the offense did not substitute inside the numbers. Five yards. Repeat first down. That's Anthony Edwards, the wide receiver. So this will Wait, force the Cardinals that, back. That's to keep players from just hopping off onto the field and changing your personnel at the last second. You have to come inside the numbers when you make a personnel change. So he, he didn't come into the huddle. And you don't have to go all the way into the huddle, but at least you have to come inside the numbers 
to define yourself for the other team so that they know what personnel you're playing against. I guess Edwards has not been keeping up with the rule book as much yeah. as you have. Well, well that's, that's to keep the, the offense from putting 10 guys out and popping another guy onto the field at the last second and throwing to him because he's wide open. First down and 15. Graham? Oh, man. Pass to wow. to Kevin Williams, but a short game. You know the amazing thing about that was? I mean, that hit is just incredible. And it's not Hardy Nickerson. It's Derek Brooks. And, and Derek Brooks has raised the level of his game to the all-pro Hardy Nickerson. And you confuse their numbers, not just because a five and a six look close to each other, but because the way they hit is so similar. Look at that. Just knocks him right up off his feet and down on the ground. And we hit the two-minute warning. Graham did not get the playoff. Two minutes to go. Buccaneers leading by one. Back in Tampa, Tony Dungy's Buccaneers leading Vince Tobin and the Cardinals, 19-18. Coming up next on our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, most of you will see the Chicago Bears and the Dallas Cowboys. Some of you will see the Rams take on the Raiders. That's coming up next on Fox NFL Sunday. Two minutes to play. Second and 12, Graham over the top, incomplete, the pass is short, intended for Kevin Williams. Well, we talked earlier about putting this game into Ken Graham's hands, now it's in his hands. We asked for it, at least I did, and now we've got it. Graham picked off by John Lynch earlier this quarter, leading for the go-ahead touchdown. Third down and throw. Graham under pressure and he is taken down by Marcus Jones, a flag on the play. And it is against the Cardinals. Danny, we talked earlier about Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, turning those defensive linemen loose with stunts. And that's what he did. They get a green call on third and anything more than eight. Those defensive linemen get a green call. Holding they call whatever they want. 74, the offense, 75. That's six sacks for Tampa Bay today. None bigger than that one there. So the Cardinals will punt with a minute 49 to go. Each team with three timeouts remaining. Matt Pedling, Williams, fair catch, 52-yard punt by Fiegel. So with a minute 41 remaining, Buccaneers will try and run out the clock and make it 5-0 for only the second time in their history. They've won seven straight here at home over the last two years. They've won nine of their last 11. Should Tampa Bay win, a sixth consecutive victory dating over the last two seasons would be a new team record. The last team in the NFL to start 5-0, the 1994 San Diego Chargers, and they went to the Super Bowl. First down from the 14, Warren Gunn. And the Cardinals called timeout with a minute 34 remaining from Tampa. Kenny Albert, Tim Green in Tampa. A minute 34 remaining. Cardinals will have two more opportunities to stop the clock. They have two timeouts remaining. They trail the Buccaneers by one. 19-18. Tampa Bay led 12-0, then trailed 18-12. Now a very disciplined Cardinals defense has got to stay disciplined to give their offense one more chance. Second and nine, the inside handoff to Allstott. Out across the 20. And again, the Cardinals all timeout. Stop the clock with a minute 27 to go. I, I can't think of a running back I'd rather have in the NFL right now than Michael Allstott if you're trying to run at, run at tough yardage and run out the clock. Remember, should the Cardinals stop the Buccaneers here, and Tampa Bay is forced to punt, all Arizona needs is a field goal. Kevin Butler 
one of the clutch field goal kickers in National Football League history. 16 game winners. Three of those with Arizona, the other 13 with Chicago, and 14 of the 16 have come in the last minute of the game or in overtime. But this is a big three yards right here for Tampa Bay to go. And the problem that the Cardinals defense has is that Tony Dungy has got confidence in Trent Dilfer. And with the emergence of Dilfer and the way he's played, now his numbers, his completions haven't been great percentage-wise today, but he's got two touchdowns. They know that it could be a run, but it could also be a pass. Third down and three. Allstott. McKinnon made contact, and Allstott looks to be short. Yeah, you talk about determination. I think his helmet came off on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got no helmet on. Now, you can see... <laughs> It, you can't express it any better than that. I mean, look at this guy. He's out there. He's battling for that three yards that they need to prevent the Cardinals from having another chance. And he's running, and he's not stopping, and his helmet's off, and he doesn't care. This is the same guy that in college took his Jeep, put it in neutral, and pushed it 100 yards across the parking lot to build strength and endurance in his legs. I think he's going to come up short, Kenny. Yes, not by much. And the clock stopped for measurement, so the Cardinals still have one timeout remaining. Yeah. A minute 18. George Diaz being helped off the field. Watch this determination. This is the guy. You need three yards, you give it to him. And watch. Helmet comes off right there. Look, you think he's going to stop? No. Puts his hand over his head to give himself as much protection as he can and then pushes forward, pushes on. Tommy Barnhart back to punt. Evan Williams, the deep man, for the Cardinals. They're saying don't go off sides right now with the message along that Cardinals front. Barnhart letting the clock run down. Now under a minute. Takes a Buccaneers bounce. Here it does. Finally comes to a rest at the 19-yard line. 58 yards, including the roll. And there is Kevin Butler. 16 game-winning field goals. Week two against Dallas at Sun Devil Stadium. In overtime, he needed help from the goalpost. That was career game winner number 16 and then in the final seconds against Washington week three this set the game into overtime so Kevin Butler has been called upon each of the last two games and has come through on both occasions but the Cardinals need to move about 45 or so yards yeah. to get into field goal range don't think Kevin Butler isn't thinking about the field goal he missed earlier Kenny I don't think he's not aching for a chance to get this one back. Butler missed a field goal, but the Buccaneers missed an extra point and a two-point conversion. So both teams missed out on three points from the special teams. Four wide receivers, 46 seconds remaining. Cardinals with one timeout. Grant's pass complete, seconds. And he works his way out of bounds with 39 seconds on the clock. Now the first thing about a two-minute offense is your protection. You've got to protect the quarterback, and then the quarterback has to find the receivers downfield. It becomes like a video game. He's got to read the coverage, he's got to see the separation, but he's got to have, he's got to be able to see the screen. They've got to protect Kent Graham. Centers pick up the first now. First and 10 from the 30. 
centers again. Now they got to burn their only timeout. They stop the clock with 30 seconds to go. Arizona with no timeouts remaining. Boy, I have to wonder about that right there because you've only got one timeout. You've got it. If you get down into field goal range, you're going to have to stop the clock one way or another, either by going out of bounds or by clocking the ball or by using your timeout, but now you've got none. Tim, coming up next on Fox NFL Sunday, many of you will see the Bears and the Cowboys. Dave wants them against his former cl club, and the Rams take on the Raiders. Yeah, don't think that Bears-Cowboys thing won't be a game either, because Dave wants that was the former coach of the Cowboys. He knows them. And then we saw Pam Oliver in the pregame show sit down and talk to Emmett Smith and the problems he's had getting into the end zone. He wants to get that thing back on track. I don't think anybody knows a better way to keep him from getting on track than one of his old coaches, Dave Wanstead. Graham over the 300-yard mark for the first time this season. 30 seconds to go. Arizona with no timeout. Four wide receivers. Graham looking downfield, and it's incomplete, intended for Rob Moore. You gotta give this kid right here, Floyd Young, credit. He's the guy who was on the practice squad earlier this week. They activated him, and we've seen him make some plays. You know, that just tells you about the character of a team. When you can draw from the depth of your roster and still get a guy to step up and make plays, it tells you that something is very, very right in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers organization. And I'm telling you, it's right, it starts right here with this guy. Tony Dungy is a solid coach, a solid person. Starts there and emanates outward. Third down and six. Graham to Sanders, first down, they have no timeouts. Sanders inside the 40, across the 30, out of bounds. And the what Cardinals play. are in field goal Unbelievable range. play by Frank Sanders. Incredible turning himself into a runner. That was huge. And I mean, that's what you'd expect Warwick Dunn to do. A 37-yard play, and he gets out of bounds. The out of bounds is the key because they've got to go so far, I don't think they get the clock down. I don't think they get the clock play to stop it if Frank Sanders doesn't get himself out of bounds. Watch this here. No business at all getting out of bounds. Look, he's in the center of the field. Dead center. Breaks the tackle there by Donnie Abraham. Gets blocks downfield and gets himself to the sideline. 12 seconds to go. Graham looking sideline. Incomplete. With seven seconds, here comes Butler. The line of scrimmage, the 29. So this will be a 46-yard field goal attempt. And this is just the guy you want to be making this kick. A guy who's been around, who's done it time after time after time. Officially 47. The holder is Jeff Eagle. Butler one for two today. From 47. And a good by Butler is no good. Not even close. Short and wide to the right. And the Buccaneers, for the second time in their history, have started a season 42 rushing yards, only six first downs. Yet they prevail. They make it 5-0, and eight consecutive wins at home. They've won 10 of their last 12. And they are headed up to Lambeau Field next week to face the Super Bowl champions. Buck 
Buccaneers over the Cardinals by the score of 19-18. And Brad Culpepper with three sacks in the first half.